Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Marshall, co-founder and executive director of This Is My Brave, and I am so excited to be here for another episode of Brave Beyond the Stage. And today I'm with Josh Britt from our 2019 Houston show. So Josh, thanks so much for taking time out to catch up and to chat with me. Absolutely. No, thank you. It was good, good to see you again. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been, been a minute. <laughs> yeah, it has. Well, we were just talking before we hopped in here to the recording that um, it's been since, you know, before the pandemic that we last kind of connected. So it's great to get an update. So let's start yeah. with, um, let's start with where your life was before This Is My Brave kind of came into the picture. Give us a um, description. Sure. Yeah, so uh, before I did the um, the show here in, in Houston, um, I had, uh, you know, kind of come to the end of the road with uh, um, a heroin addiction um, and uh, had, um, uh, for better or worse, gone through the uh, the prison system. Uh, and um, I had been, uh, I had gotten out and I was living in a, um, a sober home at the time in Oxford House. Um, and, uh, you know, just going through the, um, uh, the rigorous, criteria of uh, deferred adjudication uh, here in Harris County. Uh, and, um, and so um, I, it, it was, it was a struggle, right? I mean, but I was, but I was, I was really determined, you know, um, and uh, I had done a lot of internal work while I was locked up that um, really made all the difference for me um, this time uh, around. Um, so uh, I, <clears throat> was, um, you know, just jumping through these hoops, going to, I had to, I had to go, you know, meet my probation officer, um, you know, periodically, uh, but also hold down a job, you know, um, <laughs> and also um, go to six months of aftercare, you know, so I was doing all these things, um, and, uh, and uh, uh, was just kind of had, had my head down and didn't know really, um, you know, what was around the next corner, you know, I was just kind of taking it <laughs> one day at a time, you know, sort of, sort of so to speak. Um, but, uh, that's that's where I was at prior to um, the show. Yeah. Yeah, and we will link your performance piece from the show in the notes um, down below. But I loved how you talked about like you took that time. You had a while. It was like about a year in prison that last time. Yeah. Yeah. About a year. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you just kind of said to yourself like. I can use this to my advantage or let it go by. And you did more, more like, more like, uh, I had, I have to, you know, <laughs> like, cause it's just like, it was kind of this, I don't know how to describe it, but it was like a feeling of like, this is, uh, it, it's now or never, you know what I mean? Because I, I had had previous attempts, you know, to, you know, go to rehab or what, you know, this sort of thing. And, um, and it just, I, I couldn't, make anything stick you know um i tried 12 step programs and stuff and, and i learned some great things there you know and, and which i still use today but uh um it just for me there was something like deeper like underlying you know it wasn't just like oh I'm, I'm an addict you know it was like there's something going on with me you know that uh that i need to fix because otherwise you know we're just going to keep repeating this cycle and you know yeah well i think that was really that was in interesting to hear like because you hear people go into these programs the uh, uh, recovery programs and for you and it's different for every person but for you it Absolutely. took that long period of time of that self-reflection which I think we don't we don't understand the value of I guess um so yeah. it's pretty amazing how you told that story on stage and yeah <laughs> that. yeah it's it's um it's a message that uh, I'm sure everyone around me uh, is is tired of, of hearing because I, I just like, you know, um, it, it was um, a revelation, really. You know what I mean? To to go through this process, and, and and it still is today. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, just it's a, it's an ongoing process, but that that the core of it, you know, the uh, the the big heavy lifting, you know, uh, was just. I mean, I, I still think about it today, and it's just like it's I'm amazed you know <laughs> like it, uh, um, I need you know it, uh, it it's like I got what I needed at the right time you know it was um, uh, even though it was in this horrible place <laughs> like, you know, it was like, at the same time there was this you know it, it was kind of the perfect opportunity you know to um, to, to, to like to transform yeah 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 wow well so tell us about how this is my brave came into the picture tell us that story 
Yeah. So, so that, um, uh, again, you know, like, uh, <clears throat> just syn synchronicity, right? Like these, these events that, you know, just line up, right. I, I was, um, at the time I was living in that, you know, the, the, this sober house and, uh, um, you know, obviously during my addiction, uh, um, in the late stages in particular, um, I'm, I'm trying to like shut people out, you know, um, and, uh, because I don't want, you know, eyes on me and everything. I just want to be you know, left alone. And, and, and you know, um, so I didn't communicate with a lot of people from my, you know, my past high school buddies, you know, friends from my hometown, that sort of thing. Um, so I, uh, now here I am, you know, like you know, doing everything I need to do and just, you know, um, but life is like, you know, I've got this, you know, um, low paying job, you know, all this stuff, you know, like, so I'm, uh, and I'm living in a house with like five dudes, you know, so, so I go down the street to the grocery store to get some fish. I was going to make some salmon or whatever. I'm at the, I'm at the counter like to, to buy my seafood. And, uh, and I look over and there's, um, Melissa, uh, no, <laughs> you know, who is one of the co-producers of the show. And she, uh, she and I grew up in Beaumont together and played tennis, you know, uh, I went to the same high school. Um, um, actually my, uh, ex-girlfriend, my, my, my high school girlfriend was, a uh, one, you know, one of her best friends. So, um, so we, you know, I, I knew her really well, but of course hadn't talked to her in, since we were both lived in Austin, I had probably been over 10 years since I'd seen wow. her. And, uh, um, so she, saw, she saw me and, uh, she was just like, oh my gosh, you know, what's been going on with you? And I was like, Phew, uh, <laughs> you know, I had this how long do you have? I'm like, mm, do I want to get into this in the grocery store? You know, like, yeah. so I gave her like this, like really like brief, you know, uh, run through of like, well, <laughs> I went through some stuff, you know, like da, da, da. And so, um, she immediately was like, um, uh, uh, oh, that's, that's so crazy because I'm, you know, I'm working on this, this, this thing called, this is my brave, you know, and we're trying to put this show together. And she, she was really sneaky about how she pitched it to me. Right. Because she was, <laughs> she said, uh, she said, well, maybe you can like help me like get the word out, you know, and, and, um, and, and bring some people in. And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I love that. Out. The <laughs> soft <laughs> approach. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it was very, very manipulative. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, you know, one thing led to another. within like a week, she was like, you know, what do you think about um, telling your story? And I, I took an evening and I, and I thought about it. It really didn't take long, you know, like I, I thought about it for probably less than an hour, you know, I was at home and I was just like, yeah, like I need, I need to do this. You know what I mean? It just felt like, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like let, let's, let me tell my story because it's really weird. Um, you know, it's, it's probably not one that everyone will get, you know, but the people that would get it maybe need to hear it, you know, like, because I know I certainly felt like, you know, um, uh, like, like I'm on a lonely Island, you know, uh, when I was going through this process, you know, so, so John, John, give, yeah. give those who don't know your story yet, who hopefully will watch as a result of this episode, give them the, a little snippet of it that you know, doesn't tell everything, but like yeah. what led to drug addiction? Okay. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, just, I mean, just briefly, I, I, um, um, I was a, a, a doctoral candidate, uh, and, uh, at UT Boston and, um, <clears throat> I um, was a was a musician and some, you know other things and uh, life was seemingly going along you know uh, well for for years. Um, I um, had a falling out with my um, PhD advisor um, and he uh, um, I, I I had a, a breakthrough in my research um, and uh, some pretty exciting results and so I was going to publish. It was actually the last paper in my dissertation. I had already published a few, you know, so this is going to be the last thing. And then I, you know, I, I defend my, my dissertation. Anyways, um, they, uh, the guy um, took my work and, um, uh, and he published it under his name. Um, and, uh, and so I have been working on this for like, um, really this line of research since I was an undergrad. Um, so for years and years and years. And, um, I guess I was just so closely identified, you know, with that, that I, I just was like, well, you know, what do I, what, what do I have now? You know? And I, and I, I, I tried to talk to a few people, you know, and, and um, anyways, long story short, uh, uh, um, 
I just sort of gave up on myself and, you know, and, and on life because I didn't know, um, you know, uh, where, where to go from there, you know? Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and so I, I took a leave of absence. I fell, I fell into addiction, you know, took a leave of absence. Um, and I, you know, I, like, as I mentioned earlier, I tried, tried to do rehab and stuff and, uh, it was, I could get clean. Uh, it was hard to stay clean, you know, the first little bump in the road or whatever, I was just, you know, like, oh, I knew this wouldn't work. And, you know, just really down on myself, you know? Um, uh, and that's a, that's a hard thing to like describe to people, you know, uh, but that's just how I, that's how I reacted which, which was really useful in the end because I, you know, that's where I kind of began was like, well, why, why did that happen? Why was that, you know, where I was at, right? And so that's that's where my little inner work journey began when I was when I was locked up. But uh, yeah, so essentially, I mean, my my the reason I was locked up is because I was pulled over and had drugs on me, and, you know. So so that was like, you know, and it, and it and it happened, uh, uh, you know, in two different counties, like overlapping, right? Like the the time period. So, um, you know, I think honestly, because of my demographic is the only reason I was even allowed deferred adjudication, which uh, turns out in Texas is not all it's cracked up to be anyway. So, 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 uh, cause I'm still having problems today, you know, as far as like, you know, getting an apartment or what, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it, it still has ramifications today, even though I'm, I've been discharged, you know, successfully discharged from all this stuff years ago, you know? So it's, um, you know, uh, that's, that's essentially where, uh, you know, where my journey took me um, and, and how it all happened. I, I found out when I was in there doing this inner work, uh, when I was when I was locked up, uh, that underlying all of it was essentially I, I had never had um, <clears throat> like an internal sense of self-worth or value um, that, uh, uh, you know, I, I had always based that on external things, you know, like, uh, how loud were they cheering for that last song? Or, you know, like how many like attaboys did I get with my, you know, work? Like um, so many of us do. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what I came to realize is that this is like an endemic thing. Yeah. You know, um, some people just, you know, um, take it on the chin better than others, you know, uh, uh, so. So Josh, when, when you're doing that inner work, like what were some of the tools you used? Were, was it books and mainly? Uh, a, a lot of great books from amazing uh, gurus <laughs> like uh, um, Eckhart Tolle is like probably my you know I, I always sing praises <laughs> uh, uh, but also you know Gary Zukav, Brene Brown uh, you know like um, there's there's so many you know um, that helped tremendously you know of course you know I'm, I'm also reading like Game of Thrones and stuff at the time but like but, but, like, but well, most of my reading was focused on you know like saving my life so, so uh, and then uh but uh meditation was probably like um the biggest tool you know um for me uh and I had learned how to you know um meditate at, at a young age actually my mom was like the first one to, to introduce me to to that and then um uh, and of course I got more practice you know and rehabs and stuff <laughs> but uh mm -hmm. I um I you know by no means like any kind of like you know uh, expert or anything like that but I just was like you know I, what I needed to do was find stillness which in that environment when you're in a you know 68 man dorm <laughs> like of, of felons of all <laughs> ages or whatever you know it can be a hard thing to do but it was absolutely necessary so it was great practice you know because mm -hmm. if I could do it there you know, uh, and if I could learn to, you know, uh, visit myself uh, and my past with compassion instead of like judgment uh, in that environment, then I had a feeling that I could probably do it outside of that environment too, uh, which mm -hmm. I knew I would need to do. So, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> well, so, so Melissa so reeled you in from yeah. the grocery store <laughs> and you joined the, the cast. And um, what was, Tell us about what your brave experience was like, like meeting your fellow storytellers, rehearsing a couple times, and then that day on stage. What did it all feel like? Oh wow! So, so the um, the practices were really, uh, you know, uh, we we would meet once a month, you know, and, and run through our thing, and and so that that was really useful um, to sort of um, get a feel for the direction that I wanted to, you know to go um <clears throat> and then it's like as, as it progressed i kind of more and more just was like you know let my uh or, or tried to get a little bit closer to um 
you know, just my natural delivery, which is, which is humor. You know what I mean? Because if you can't laugh at yourself, then, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that, so I, I, I kind of use that to like break the edge because these are like um, difficult things to discuss, right? You know, um, so uh, um, it's it sort of like naturally, like as it progressed, like took on this flavor, you know, of, of uh, um, you know, just a, a mix of like, you know, uh, sentimental and, 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 and humorous like delivery. But uh, but it was really awesome meeting everybody's story because there were so many different backgrounds and, and so many different uh, things. But no matter how different, you know, their situation was, there's always this element, you know, having gone through it, I've gone through that, uh, I could find elements of you know, commonality in every one story, right? Yeah. Which became useful later on too. But uh, uh, you know, I, I now use my experience to help people that it, it which it has nothing to do with like you know addiction or de you know depression or whatever. It's just um, it's just struggles and overcoming obstacles and taking your power back. Because that's my mm -hmm. big thing, you know. Because um, I for so many years I'd given my power away, you know, um, and without even knowing, you know, and um, mm -hmm. so. Um, so that, that, that was really awesome. And then the day of the show, um, mm -hmm. was, uh, just a really exciting thing, you know, um, uh, to, to get up there and, and, um, <clears throat> and just feel the love like back from the audience, you know, um, I say that too. I feel yeah. that too, when I'm up yeah. on the stage and you, they're listening so intently and mm -hmm. did, um, was that the first time Josh, you told your story publicly or had you shared it publicly before? It, it was, I mean, so there was um, about two weeks before that show, uh, it was going to be the first time. And about two weeks before that show, Mel Melissa, again, uh, had um, uh, <clears throat> got me a little uh, time in between um, two psychiatrists who were, who were doing a presentation to a room full of um, doctors. Uh, and it was called, it's this organization called Doctors for Change. And so uh, I thought um, this is kind of a good, I didn't, even though it wasn't, I really wasn't telling my story, like uh, at least in the same sense that of, uh, this is my brave, um, but I used, you know, elements of my story to talk about specifically because um, what they were interested in was uh, mental health in the prison system, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how it is addressed or not addressed. And um, so uh, it was funny because there, there were these two um, therapists or, or psychiatrists that were affiliated with you know, Harris County's um, uh, criminal justice system. And so to get, then they just like right between last second, they, they squeeze me and it's like, well, here's a, here's an offender, you know, <laughs> like, and, and here's his perspective, you know, but it's funny because I have the background in, you know, in neuroscience, you know, and, and so um, I could speak their language and, you know, and, uh, and that was a really cool opportunity for me to like vent, you know, <laughs> and just be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's some problems, you know, with, with, with the system, you know, but, uh, anyway, could but just so, get, could you get therapy in prison or was it just meds if you needed them? So where, where, where I went, uh, no, but they do have, um, uh, they, they actually tried to send me to, uh, uh, you know, a special needs unit where I could get, you know, be on medication or take, you know, therapy. And, uh, and I, I told them no, because <laughs> it's a longer stay. And I was like, no. So, so <laughs> I was just, and, uh, you know, but um, it, it worked out, you know, um, for me, uh, because I wanted to, you know, if, if I was able to do it without medication and, and you know, and, uh, and in a shorter time span, I wanted to, to try, you know, mm -hmm. and luckily that worked out for me. Um, so, um, so two but, weeks before the show, you get to do this. Talk yeah, it wasn't, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it wasn't the same thing, you know, but it was, but it was close enough, closely enough related, you know, that uh, it was kind of a good, you get the jitters out, you know, yeah. <laughs> that, that sort of thing. Because, you know, I've been on stage playing music and, mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, for, for years, but uh, it's different when you're, you know, when you're telling something that's so personal in, in, in plain terms, right? Like, um, so that how did you decide to tell your story for the show through just like storytelling versus through a song? So I, uh, part, part <laughs> that was kind of like, I thought about it, you know, going back and forth. And I just felt like for me, um, I had always done, you know, music, um, uh, to communicate, you know, that was, that was my outlet. Right. Um, <clears throat> for one, um, I had uh, issues with my creativity um, uh, uh, at that time, and I and I still to this to this day, uh, you know, years later, I don't think it's back to where it was, you know, like prior to you know late stages of addiction or whatever. But I think that's that's more on me, you know, just like 
um, probably like, you know, afraid to go there right now, but, but like, but it's better, it's definitely better than it was, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, I, I felt like, uh, more importantly, um, it, it, you know, to, to be able to like speak plainly and tell the story in plain terms rather than like metaphors or, you know, um, uh, or, or poetically, right. I wanted to like, you know, actually say like, no, here's here's what happened, you know, like um, and who knows the song could come later. I hope yeah, it comes later. Absolutely, absolutely, you know, and and um it's funny that you say that because like I um uh, I have started you know writing again now um and uh mostly just you know music at the moment but I've done some like some lyric extra for me writing the lyrics was always the the more um strenuous part anyway like the music comes easily so like so I've started um getting back into that you know and, and trying to get back into form um, uh, so that hopefully when, you know, this pandemic sort of dies down, I can get out there and start doing that again. Cause it's really good for me, you know, to, mm -hmm. to do that. It's such an important part of my life, you know, and for, it has been forever. So. And remind <laughs> me, you play guitar, right? Yeah. Play, play guitar and sing. Um, that, that, that's my primary. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. My daughter started playing guitar two oh, years yeah? ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, um, I actually was giving my little cousin, uh, uh lessons over, uh, Zoom. <laughs> She like, does like during the pandemic. Now too. It's so yeah. amazing. Like mm -hmm. they can really still pick up on it. And yeah. So Absolutely. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Music is healing. And so yes, yeah. I hope it, that song comes out someday. Yeah, I, I do too. And I'm sure, I'm sure. It well, it's, it, I was telling my best, uh, my best friend who lives in North Carolina, uh, who was, who's been with me, you know, throughout this whole journey before, during, and after, um, uh, that uh, I felt like that was on the horizon, you know, was, uh, I was like, I think I'm getting pretty close to, like, I can just kind of feel something, you know, like, in the works, like, you know, bubbling up, I was like, I think I'm getting pretty close to doing, like, you know, like an album about this sort of thing, you know, which would be awesome. Wow. That'd be really we awesome. We need it. I mean, the world... <laughs> Yeah. needs more of these stories out there so yeah. that was my next question to kind of like take <laughs> things full circle yes. like where where are things today in your life like how are you doing today and since the the this is my brave show back in houston yeah yeah so uh it, it, i use you know that show um i mentioned this earlier right like when my when my uh i i'm in this condo now like uh um but uh which I was, I was lucky enough to, to get, you know, when I finally was like, I got to get out of this sober house. <laughs> but, uh, like, so I, I got out of there and I moved here and I wanted to move into um, another one bedroom in this same, uh, this same complex. Right. And uh, you'll like this story. So I, I, uh, I applied to this one bedroom. Each unit is independently owned. Right. So um, I wanted to move into a smaller unit and I uh, applied um, got denied because of my background. Um, and I was just like, I, I found the, the, uh, the listing agent's, um, number and I sent her my talk <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> and, and I said, I'm not expecting this to change anything. You know, uh, I just want you to know who I am, you know? And, um, and, uh, uh, and I was like, you know, I've been living in this complex, like across the pool for the last year. And I was like, I'm an exemplary neighbor and, you know, and, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I got a response back, you know, and she was just, she watched the show, you know, and, and was just, uh, uh, she was like, thank you for sharing that with me. I'm going to, I'm going to share this with the owners, you know, I'll let you know if, you know, anything changes. And of course, you know, it didn't, but I, I like, it just felt good to be like, you know, um, I can, I can use that now, you know, as a, and I don't know if you'll ever notice, but if you go to the YouTube, uh, uh, link to my show and you look down in the comments, you'll see that the, uh, the second comment is from uh, Harris County Probation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever noticed that or I not. Didn't. But yeah, take a look. You'll you'll get a kick out of that. Yeah, the Harris County wow. Probation was like, congratulations, you know, Dr. Britt or whatever. So, uh, you know, it's not often that happens. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, I love that you use yeah. it. I mean, yeah. it's that's what so, it's for. It's, it's like continuing very, those brave conversations, like yeah. to that, build a more open world. Kind of the direction I'm going in now, right? Is like. Um, and, you know, how can we get like, you know, how, how can we do something right for people that are changing their lives, you know, that still carry this, you know, mm -hmm. um, stigma, right? Uh, you know, particularly like with the criminal justice system, you know, that that interests me a lot, um, uh, you know, um, or, or being and once you're branded as, a, as an addict, um, you know, uh, being able to have, you know, uh, 
have access right to um, to op future opportunities once you've you know yeah. dealt with you know whatever. Um, so uh, because that's that's a struggle that's ongoing for me, you know, and I'm, and, um, and so it's something I became passionate about because I'm like if, I, if I'm having problems and I'm a white male with a PhD, you know, what yeah. about you know this guy next to me, you know, like that doesn't have any of you know like the you know advantages or whatever that I've been blessed with, right? Like it, it's just you know um, in this day and it. age you're seeing all these things you know i love that you're using your experience like yeah. you turning your pain into pat purpose and and yeah, meaning. yeah. like what what else can we do just trying like, just trying to to use it to like open people's eyes and at least start a dialogue you know mm -hmm. hey you know can we can we can we be better can we do something <laughs> yeah. can we improve this you know like because i don't know it um i just think it needs to be you know heard so, yes yeah. and first systems to change we have to yeah. tell our stories yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> Josh, you're amazing. I'm so like grateful that you took that leap when Melissa approached you in the seafood <laughs> aisle of the grocery store. <laughs> um, so keep doing what you're doing. And Thank um, thanks for being part of the Brave family. <laughs> thanks and for, we'll, thanks for having me on. We'll link any resources that you mentioned in the description and your piece. So everyone go watch Josh's story and stay in touch well great well thank you very much again it was, it was a, a pleasure to to be on and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend you too bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye